Mom and Dad were both so angry. But they're saying they'll forgive you if you apologize. What? Why should I be the one to apologize? I don't think I'll be able to get along with people who would say that. I'm never going to see them again. Don't be stupid. If that's what you're saying, I'm divorcing you. Get out. Actually, I was just about to leave, you know. My name is Jade, and I'm a 30 year old office worker. Just recently, my boyfriend Harry proposed to me. We were both into online games, and we first met at a meetup. He's seven years older than me, and is kind and accepting. He understands how important work is to me and keeps a nice distance, which is what I like about him. However, I do not know what to do after being proposed to. Marriage wasn't really an option I was thinking about. I felt like marriage seemed binding. Of course, I don't mean I want to have an affair or anything, but it just felt like more responsibilities and becoming unable to focus just on work. I don't really have any hobbies, and I love work. Working makes me feel good. I generally don't know what to do on days off. So, I'm probably a bit strange. This is mostly the reason why all my ex boyfriends left me. You're like a guy. Why do I have to adjust my schedule because of your work? They've said things like this to me. In the end, men want to be the ones in control. They'll probably expect me to become a housewife, or say things like, housework is the wife's job. Unbearable. That's why I've never thought of marriage as being a happy ending. But Harry has proposed to me. I check to see if he truly understands. I'm not quitting my job. Of course not. I don't know whether I can go out in days off. I don't mind. We are both going to do the housework. Are you okay with that? I've lived on my own for a long time, no problem. When I focus on work, we might not get much time together. Are you good with that? I have multiple hobbies, and I know how to spend time on my own. Um, why do you want to marry me then? It's just. Even if all of what you just said is true, I don't want you to become someone else's. Even if we only live together on weekends or live separately, I still want to marry you. Not just boyfriend and girlfriend. But an officially married couple who have vowed that they will love each other forever. It's just my selfish request. So, if you don't want to, we don't have to get married. Common law marriage can work if that's better for you. This all made sense to me, so I decided to trust him. He truly understood me and made these suggestions. I know I can manage married life with this man. And maybe I don't need to change a thing even if I get married. This is why I decided to marry Harry. As I had been saying to my family and friends that I had no intention of getting married, they were all really surprised when I told them. My mother was in tears because she was so happy. I realized how much this meant to her. She always said, Live the life you like. But in truth, I'm sure she wanted to see her daughter get married. I feel so happy to put a smile on my mom's face. I'm glad I got married. We have our wedding, and we start life together as husband and wife. We've moved into our new house, unpacked, and gone through all the complicated paperwork as well. It was then when Harry suggested we stay one night at his parents' house. It seems relatives are gathering this Saturday. I have to make sure I'm not rude to any of them. Oh, no problem. My parents were already old when they had me, and they'll probably think of you as more of a granddaughter than a daughter. So, you don't have to worry too much. 
This is what my husband says, and I feel somewhat better. I did want to probably say hello to my in-laws after the wedding, so I agreed to Harry's suggestion to attend the gathering. I had no idea what was about to happen. I call my mother and ask her whether there is anything I should be careful about at their house. I was cautious, because I knew that all the relatives were coming. Since my dad died when I was young, my mom has taken care of me on her own. I love and respect her so much. When I have concerns, I always speak to her. I should take an apron with me, right? Yes, it might not be good to help with the preparation too much. So ask them if they need help. And if they say yes, you should be ready to do what they ask. Don't forget to bring some gifts with you either. Okay. Thanks, Mom. After speaking to her, I feel so much better. This is going to work. On the day we are going to Harry's parents' house, I feel completely ready. Harry drives, and in about 40 minutes, we arrive. It's been since the wedding that I am seeing my in-laws and the relatives. Harry says they are all looking forward to seeing me. I have no worries anymore, and I'm excited. Once we are at the house, it seems the relatives are already there. I can hear them chattering inside, and they may already be dining. I follow my husband into the living room. Oh, you're here! Come in, come in! Sit down, and we can toast one more time. Harry's parents are already slightly drunk, and they look cheerful. We sit down and have our drinks. I hand the gift I brought to Harry's parents. Oh, thank you so much! Is there anything I can do to help? As I say this, I take my aprons out of my bag. No, no, there's no need. You just sit here and enjoy. Okay, thank you. Neither of Harry's parents asked me to help with anything and say I should enjoy the dinner. I am a little surprised. Both of them are quite old. Harry's mother is 68, while his father is 72. As Harry said, they may be treating me as if I'm their granddaughter. These thoughts go through my head, and we continue dinner, when it happened. Here's another beer. Thank you. The wedding was wonderful, wasn't it? Harry's mother comes over to me and starts talking about the wedding. Oh, thank you. If I had one complaint, it would be about your mother, though. Um, I'm sorry. What do you mean? Well, the scar on her face. It's tough to look at. Excuse me? It kind of ruins the feel of a celebration, doesn't it? Well, she was hiding it with makeup, but it did stand out. If I had a scar like that, I'd never attend the wedding. I couldn't believe my ears. Harry's mother was insulting my mom. Then her husband steps in and adds his comment. Well, I guess it can be helped because you don't have a father. It would be wrong to have neither parent at the wedding. So, even if she's scarred, she'd have to attend even though she knows how embarrassing it is. Unbelievable. What on earth are these people saying? My mom's scar is the result of an accident. When my dad drove when I was a child, mom would sit with me in the back seat for my safety. However, a speeding car from the opposite lane came crashing into us. And though my dad cut the wheel, he crashed into a pole and died there and then. Mom came on top of me to protect me, but a piece of glass from the front window was stuck in her face and she was terribly injured. It seems Harry's parents do not know about this. I look at Harry, 
I've explained everything to him, so he knows how my mom got the scar. Harry looks uncomfortable, looks down at the food, and starts eating. You are not going to defend me? I am completely disappointed at him. Your wife's mother is being made fun of, and you're not going to take your wife's side. And as for my in-laws, completely out of the question. It's unthinkable. They are laughing and making fun of my mother in front of the relatives. I could not let this pass. Excuse me. Why would you say something like that? Didn't you even consider for a moment why my mother has that scar? Maybe they didn't expect me to snap back at them, but they seem to be in shock. The relatives are suddenly all silent as well. She got it trying to protect me during the accident where we lost my dad. If she hadn't saved me, I may have been the one who got injured, or I may have even died. Making fun of people's scars without even knowing what they went through? This is unbelievably childlike. I'm sorry. I'm going home. The relatives all look uncomfortable, and my in-laws are turning red. Harry is staring at me with his mouth wide open. I stand up and leave the house. I catch a cab, head to the station, and take a train home. Once I'm home, I decide to gather my things and prepare to leave. But it's already night time, and I can't drive because I've been drinking. So I spent that night at home. I decide to wait for Harry to return the next day. I wanted to leave as soon as possible, but maybe it's better to talk to him first and hear what he has to say before I go. When he's home, he looks very irritated. He throws his bags on the floor and glares at me. What was that? You embarrassed me and my parents. Your parents are the ones to blame. They insulted my mom in front of all the relatives. You know why my mom has that scar, and you don't even try to defend me. That's not what I'm talking about. First, you apologize for embarrassing me and my parents like that. What do you mean? That's not what you're talking about. If your parents hadn't acted so childishly, none of this would have happened. You're insulting my parents again. That is not what I'm doing. I'm saying the facts. I am explaining what happened. Mom and Dad were both so angry, but they're saying they'll forgive you if you apologize. They're being so generous. You should be grateful. What? Why should I be the one to apologize? I don't think I'll be able to get along with people who would say that. I'm never going to see them again. Don't be stupid. If that's what you're saying, I'm divorcing you. Get out. Actually, I was just about to leave. You know. I pick up the bags that I had already packed. You intended to leave. Yes, exactly. Because your family were terrible to me. Okay then. I have something to show you too. He takes out the divorce papers and bangs them onto the table. He's already filled it out, and his parents have signed their names as witnesses. This means they discussed this and decided that if I don't listen to them, he would hand me these papers. Unbelievable! I want nothing to do with these people. So, you scared? If you're sorry at all. We're going back to my parents' house right now to apologize. I wonder why he thought this could be a good way to threaten me. I pick up the divorce papers in my bags and leave the house without another word. Harry cries, "Hey!" but I ignore him, and I am back at my mom's house. Of course, I've submitted the divorce papers on the way. This means. I have nothing to do with Harry anymore. My mom is surprised to see me at home, but she hears what happened 
and has a frown on her face. I am so sorry. It's all my fault. Hey, if you say that again, I'm gonna get angry. You're the person I love and respect the most. If anyone insults you, I'm not forgiving them. I don't care if it's my husband or his parents. Thank you, Jade. A few days pass, and Harry has reached out to me several times, but I continue to ignore him. Then it seems he couldn't wait any longer, and he arrives on our doorstep. I don't want to let him in, so we are talking at the entrance. Will you reply to me? And you have to come home right now. Why should I? I have nothing to do with you anymore. What? What do you mean? I submitted the divorce papers. Huh? We are not husband and wife anymore. Don't be silly. Why would you do that? You're the one who got the papers ready. It was just up to me to submit them. I, I was only trying to threaten you. What do I care? And why would you fill out the divorce papers just to threaten me? I can't believe this. I'm going to register our marriage again. Well, I'm not going to sign anything. And besides, I've already submitted documents to prevent you from doing that. No way. Harry suddenly seems to have lost his strength. Please, please, can you reconsider this? We were in love. You know, that's not the reason why you want to continue our marriage, is it? What? You want me to take care of and nurse your parents, right? Harry freezes. You can tell he hadn't expected me to be saying something like this. Your parents. They seem to have sore legs and a sore back. They're quite old now, so you wanted a wife who can take care of them, right? Otherwise, all the responsibility would be yours, because you're their only son. Harry is completely shook up. I, I just, and he's suddenly angry. Okay, fine. You know, then you're coming back right now. No way. Why should I take care of your parents? They have nothing to do with me anymore. Shut up! Shut up! I'm taking you home, no matter what. You think you can threaten me? I'm being serious. I'm coming here again. As Harry says this, a man appears behind him. I look at the man and I'm startled. The man speaks to Harry. What do you mean by what you just said, sir? Huh? Who are you? Oh, forgive me. The man shows Harry his badge. Police? Are you a real cop? Yes, I patrol around this area under cover. I can call help right now if that's easier. No, no, thank you. Are you stalking this woman? No, no. I'm her husband. Her husband, but it seems she's in trouble. He's my ex-husband. We're divorced, but he's stalking me. What are you? What are you saying? Can you please explain, sir? I would like to ask that you come to the station with me. No, no way. I just wanted to talk, but I will come another time. Panicking, Harry. Runs away. Jade, are you right? You shocked me, Mitch. I didn't expect you to turn up like that. The policeman is Mitch, and we've been friends since we were children. I've recently been assigned to the station near here. Really? Good thing you were patrolling. Thanks. No, I actually received a call from your mom. Huh? I look inside the house and see my mom smiling at me. She lived on her own, right? So I was worried and decided to stop by once in a while. Really? I didn't know. We decided together that we'd surprise you when you come back. Did you? After that, 
We go to the living room and talk about everything that's been going on. I tell Mitch about what happened with Harry. Mitch says I should post a restraining order, so I do so straight away. Thanks to this, I am able to completely end my relationship with him and his family. By the way, according to a mutual friend, it seems Harry's parents now have a very tough time with their sore back and legs, and Harry is nursing them while working as well. He is unable to get married again and spend his days just working and nursing his parents. Serves him right. As for me, I'm enjoying my work, but there has been one small change. My childhood friend has become my husband. Right now, I live happily with my husband and mother. The in-laws are unbelievable. How can they say something like that? It's not even about them being too old to understand or anything like that either. I can't believe Harry wouldn't even say something about them. I'm glad Jade was able to leave them. Good for her that she's now married to someone who truly understands her. Congratulations. I hope she lives happily ever after with her family. Thanks for sticking around until the end. Please subscribe to our channel if you enjoyed this video, and see you in the next one.